In today's video, we're testing what you can and cannot get through with a cast cutting saw. Not long ago, I was watching a TV show called Royal Pains, and in one episode, someone got skewered through by a, a post, a fence post from like a chain link fence. They ran into a construction zone, and stabbed through their torso, and in a very heroic idea, one of the doctors grabs their cast cutting saw to try and cut the pipe so that they can safely move the patient. And I was very curious if that was something that could actually work. Like it seemed like it was working in the show. I think they then stopped because there was like spilled gasoline nearby and they didn't want to have an explosion, but they were successfully cutting the pipe. And I gotta say, it sounded like it was nonsense to me, but I wanted to test it. So I went ahead and got a cast cutting saw. Here's the basic idea. We want to test the idea that a cast cutting saw is strong enough to get through metal as seen in a TV show. We also want to test what else it can and maybe can't get through if you're trying to cut stuff. We've got our saw. It feels pretty heavy, like good solid strong motor in there or you know, maybe they just added some lead weight so it feels that way. Uh, it's got three blades, a small circle, a big circle, and a little blade like this. And if you're not familiar with cast cutting saws, they are what are called oscillating saws, which means that the whole blade, it doesn't actually spin, it just moves back and forth in a fairly short travel distance. When you're cutting something rigid like a cast, that should work pretty well because while it can cut back and forth and attack the rigid thing, when it gets to your skin, because it's not actually traveling very far at all, it can't cut you. Like it's not supposed to be able to cut through skin or even cut skin at all, which is really good for the safety of the patients. Um, and I think it also is supposed to help heat up less. So, you know, less chance of burning. So what we're gonna do today is test this against a few different things. To start off, I got a hold of something called Fiber Fix. This is basically the same stuff that casts are made out of. Slightly different formulation, maybe it's designed for repairing tools and stuff. But it's very, very similar in principle and it's a lot easier to get your hands on than actual cast making supplies. So I'm gonna throw a little cast onto my own wrist and then I'm gonna see if I can cut it off. I've given myself a cast bandage. Let's see how well this does at cutting it off. And didn't get through the cloth part as expected, so. Yeah. Okay, it didn't go as quickly and easily as I thought it would. I can kind of think of a few reasons for that. One is that I do have the small blade on here. I don't have the full size one. So the travel as it oscillates is not gonna be as big. Uh, two, this was not wrapped as tightly as a normal cast is. So it was moving around more than it probably should have. And three is just technique. I've never done this before. Four, as a possibility, this home version of a cast removal saw isn't as good as the medical ones. All possibilities. All right, well, I think it's time to test what else this is gonna work against. We know it can do something against the cast material, but what about that metal bar that they had in the TV show? And what about other softer metal? And how well does it really prevent you from cutting your own skin? Let's see if it pops a balloon while it's turned on. That feels pretty encouraging about it not cutting skin. So now I'm just gonna test it on myself. So I would say that it's about as damaging as poking yourself with it when it's not turned on. You can feel it because it is vibrating and you can see the little marks that are left in my skin, but there's no cut. There's no abrasion, you know, my skin isn't really damaged, it's just been poked a little bit. And this is on the less strong part of my skin, like on my forearm compared to like my fingertips and my palm where it really just didn't do anything. Like this was uncomfortable on my palm, nothing, just buzzes. Well, we can see what happens if we install the larger blade, if that happens to make a difference. We got the bigger blade on here, which means the motor is gonna be twisting the same amount, but the teeth should have more travel distance because we have a wider radius now. Let's see if we can feel it any different on our finger.
No, it's still fine. Like, maybe it's a tiny bit scratchier. I don't know. For the most part, it felt just the same. And I do want to take the piece of cast that I cut off and see if the larger blade makes any difference in how well it cuts there. Yes. It's hard to brace against anything right now, but it did seem like the larger blade really helped it cut through the cast a lot faster. That tiny bit more travel distance as it oscillates back and forth really seems to matter. So I do want to do something that demonstrates how this is not moving. Because it's a round blade, it looks like it's spinning, and we can also put this blade on which will illustrate the effect, but I wanted to do something else. When it's turned on, it looks pretty much the same as a moving blade. It's just a vibrating blur, and you can't tell really if it's spinning or static. But I'm just going to draw a little line right here, and if the whole blade were spinning, that line would sort of evenly blur all the way around the circle. But that's not going to happen. You can kind of see these three bigger marks I touched to the blade while it was moving, and these smaller ones are what I put when it wasn't moving. So you can see the movement that we get out of it moves sideways. It also slid a little bit because as it's vibrating it doesn't have as much friction on the surface of the marker. But I think this demonstrates pretty well how the blade isn't spinning anywhere. It's just fixed in one spot, moving back and forth just a little bit. All right, I've got here a piece of ducting, which I believe is a thin steel. But it's rigid and it's thin, so I think this has a decent chance of being cut through before we possibly ruin the blade on some other stuff. Let's give this a shot. getting very far. So I got some scratches on the surface of it. Uh, very, very slight dent on the inside. And this is, this is not hard, durable stuff. Let's see if I can get through this. Well, that was pretty good. If you look on the inside of the pipe, you can see I cut all the way through. It's a decently thick wall of PVC. The rigidity of PVC combined with the not as hard as metal nature actually works quite nicely. So it's not the most efficient way to cut through this, uh, but if you happen to have this kind of saw and a piece of PVC, it'll cut through it. And I do think that even though I was worried about the heat, it seems like it was cutting more than it was melting. It was also melting, but it was mostly cutting. So PVC, pretty good. It works okay. If I had to cut the length of this whole pipe, I wouldn't really be thrilled with it, but I could do it. Got too long of a wooden dowel. Let's see if I can trim it. All right, again, not the greatest tool for this job. We've just got a couple other things we're just gonna test. Can you cut through an apple? Yes. Quick test, I'm gonna see if I can cut through an apple when it's turned off. Yes, it was a little bit harder, but not a lot harder. Can it get through a piece of white bread? I would say the answer is yes, but it struggles a little bit on the crust which is both very movable and slightly tougher than the inside portions. Writers for the TV show Royal Pains, did you have any idea what you were talking about when you showed someone using a cast saw to cut through fencing pipe? This specifically is pipe designed for fences. Also, in the show, there was like a lot of sparks being thrown off. I bet we get zero sparks. I have no idea how long it would take to cut through this pipe with this saw blade, if indeed it's at all possible. Now I will admit, I looked up and was able to find the same model of saw that they were using in the TV show, or at least I'm like 95% sure that I found the same one. It cost more like three or four thousand dollars. It's a pretty high-end cast saw, and this is not a medical grade one, this is one from Amazon. So maybe they had a better saw, and maybe the really nice saws come with much harder blades. Maybe they had a much harder steel or even a 
carbide bladed saw. It didn't show enough details of the blade to really know that. But I doubt it because there's not really a reason to have carbide bladed saws for cutting a cast. As you saw, this works great for cutting off a cast. It did a good job, especially with the larger wheel. And even though this is a fairly thin layer and somewhat still flexible, it cut through it pretty easily. So I don't know any reason why they would use anything more intense than just the steel that is on here. But I'm also not a doctor and I don't design medical implements, so I guess it's possible that something else existed. I just don't think so. I think the writers thought, we're just gonna say that this works and no one's gonna test it. But I did test it and I thought, I didn't think that's gonna work and I was right. You cannot cut through a steel fencing pipe with a cast saw. And even if you try, it doesn't make sparks. There were no sparks whatsoever here. All right guys, I hope that you are satisfied with the testing I've done with this cast saw. If there's anything else you'd like to see me test with it or any other similar tests you'd like to see us do, let us know down in the comments. That is it for today, but we've got tons of cool videos for you to check out. Hit that box right there to see one of our favorites and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.